Welcome to Christ Notes. Thanks for logging on. We're going to continue talking today about the marriage supper of the Lamb. Matthew 22 and verse 8. It says, Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is prepared, but those invited were not worthy. Really cool thing here. The wedding feast is prepared. Everything is done. Jesus accomplished everything on the cross. Today is the day of our salvation. Now is our accepted time. God has provided everything for us through Christ. There's nothing lacking whatsoever in our lives. The Bible says that we've been given the Holy Spirit so that we can have all of the spiritual blessings right now. We don't have to wait. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. We have been raised up together, made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I think that's a very powerful scripture right there. The wedding feast is prepared. Everything is done. Everything has been accomplished. We don't have to wait for anything to have the complete and full blessings of our Father right now in this day. He will use us greatly to go serve in the power and demonstration of His Holy Spirit. Because look what he says. He says, so go to the thoroughfares where they leave the city, where the main roads and those from the country end, and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. So, God doesn't abandon the people, even though the Israelites didn't want any part of it. They wanted works. They didn't want grace. They didn't want mercy. They wanted to be able to do it themselves. God doesn't abandon his message. He's fully empowered us to go into the whole world and preach the gospel, to tell people the kingdom of heaven, it's at hand. We're empowered with the Holy Spirit to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and raise the dead. Freely we have received Freely, our Father will use us to give, and he'll take us all over the place. The one sign of Jesus' return, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to every nation. And that's what we're seeing here. Jesus is saying, this is what the kingdom is like. You are empowered now with everything that I have to go into the world and to serve them, and to call them, and to tell them the truth that will set them free. So it says, and those servants went out on the crossroads and got together as many as they found. So our Father will lead us out into the world. We'll go into all the world. We'll find people from every tribe, every nation, and every tongue. The whole world will hear the gospel, the truth. And both bad and good. I love that part right there. Not just the good, but the bad and the good. So the room in which the wedding feast was held was filled with guests. The whole reason we're doing this study right there is because of that verse. Because the room is filled with both bad and good guests. Who are the guests? That's the question that was asked to me by my wife years ago. Who are these guests, Brad? The guest aren't just the guest isn't the bride. The bride not a guest at her own wedding. The bride is the ones of the servants that were going out into the world and telling the people, hey, come on. The bride was the ones that were used to do the works that Jesus did and even greater works because he went to be with the Father. The bride is, is us. We're the saved. We're going out into the world and we find the guest and we tell them, come on, you're getting to come in here. You get to come in and be part of this. Maybe not as the bride, but as a guest. Because remember what the Bible says, every man's work shall be tried which is a good thing, and the works that don't stand, they're going to be burned up. And most people say, oh, look, those works are going to be burned up. That's a great thing because we don't want anything that's not perfect and righteous in our Father. It says, and you'll suffer loss. What's the loss you'll suffer? Is it eternal damnation? No. It's being the bride of Christ because it goes on to say that yet you yourself will be saved even as one who's passed through the fire. Jesus came to save the lost. And he's, how's he going to save them? Not by making every one of them the bride of Christ. Look at when he was here. He had the 12 apostles and he had the 70. Those were the bride. Yet, how many did they serve? They served thousands upon thousands of people who he didn't call into that inner circle, who he didn't have that intimacy with, but loved and cherished him every bit as much as he loved the, the, the 70 and the 12. And that's what we're doing. We're getting used by our Father to go into all the world and preach the gospel to, to not all, but to as many as we find. You know, the Bible says, we're going to read here in a couple verses in, in the next in our study, 
It says many are called, but few are chosen. Notice it says not all are called, but many are called. We're going to go and we're going to invite a lot of people. And these guests are going to fill this room. And there's going to be bad and there's going to be good because it's going to show just how victorious Jesus was on the cross. So I hope that helps you here start to see that, that Jesus really paid a great price, a victorious price, so that more than just the select few of us are going to get to enjoy it for eternity. What good would eternity be if it was only a few of us? A wedding has to have a, a wedding feast has to have guests and it had to make it fun, to make it exciting so you can share your joy with people. And just like we studied in Revelation chapter 3, so in the Church of Philadelphia, those even of the synagogue of Satan are going to come and they're going to learn from us what love is. Those are the guests. That's eternity. That's how victorious Jesus was, that all men can be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Thanks. Be blessed today in the power of our Father's might.